A Pakistani student meets a beauty and enjoys unforgettable time with her, not realizing what it could lead to. When he wakes up, he discovers the girl's corpse and escapes, but the police arrest him. Soon, a Muslim is accused of taking a girl against her will and taking her life, just because he is a Muslim. The series begins with Nasir Khan, nicknamed Naz, a naive American of Pakistani origin living with his parents and younger brother. Naz does very well at university and often helps friends with homework. One day, one of his friends invites a guy to a party and Naz agrees, because there will be a lot of beautiful girls there and this is a great chance to start a relationship. After returning home, the guy tells his family about the party. The mother is afraid for her son and believes that he should not go there, and the father supports the eldest son in every possible way and allows him to do what he wants. A little later, Naz calls a friend in hurries, but the student is late for a meeting. Realizing that the party is less than an hour away, Naz returns home to find his parents watching TV and his brother playing computer games. Trying to make it to the party, the guy takes the keys to his father's taxi. On the way, he is stopped by two drunk guys assuming that he is a taxi driver. Naz refuses to take passengers, as it does not work, but they continue to stay in the car. At the same time, a police car pulls up to him and the cops are wondering why he's not going anywhere. After explaining the situation, Naz asks for help and the police threaten the passengers with handcuffs, as a result of which they get out of the car. Naz can't turn off the taxi lamp, which is why the next passenger is in the car. The guy explains again that he is not working, when he suddenly notices a charming girl named Andrea behind him. She asks for a ride, as she is very late, and Naz agrees, deciding that this is his chance to get to know her better. On the way, the girl says she is thirsty, and the guy stops at a gas station to buy her a bottle of water. At this time, a dark-skinned man tries to get acquainted with Andrea but leaves as soon as notices Nas. Soon, the taxi driver's son brings the girl to the riverbank and she offers to sit with her. During the conversation, the couple gets to know each other better, after which Andrea takes not legal things out of her pocket and offers to have some fun. After taking the pills, the girl asks for a ride home and finds out on the way that Nas was in a hurry to go to the party but missed the fun because of her. After parking near Andrea's house, the guy takes her home and notices two bullies on the way, inciting the guy. He reacts to their taunts, but the girl asks not to pay attention and, taking Naz by the hand, invites him to her home. Alone, the couple has fun, drinks a lot and continues to take pills. At one point, Andrea pulls out a knife and suggests playing a game by sticking a sharp object between her fingers. By raising the stakes, the pair starts doing it without looking. The girl drives a knife between Naz's fingers, after which she offers to do the same. The guy is very afraid, but agrees and accidentally injures Andrea, but she does not feel pain due to the effects of adult drinks and substances. Experiencing a romantic mood, the couple clap. A few hours later, Naz wakes up in the living room and realizes it's too late. Going up to the second floor, the guy gets dressed and tells the girl that it's time for him to go home. Touching Andrea, Nas discovers red liquid on his hands and realizes that something has happened. Turning on the light, he sees the corpse of a girl with numerous wounds on her back. Unable to believe his eyes, Nas turns off the lamp and turns it on again, realizing that all this is a terrible reality, runs out of the girl's house to leave as soon as possible. Once in front of the taxi, the guy realizes that he forgot the keys and tries to go back, but the front door slams shut and he can't open it. Having no other choice, Naz breaks the glass and the alarm goes off, which is reacted to by one of the neighbors who noticed the guy. After finding the jacket and the car key, Naz notices a knife with which the couple was playing a dangerous game. Realizing that this is evidence confirming his guilt, the guy takes the knife and leaves the girl's house. Naz is very nervous, which is why he cuts off the car. The police assume that he has been drinking and stop a taxi, after which they arrest the student for violating traffic rules. At the same time, the police receive a message that a scene has occurred in the city center and an unknown person has taken the life of a young girl. The patrolmen go to the scene with the arrested Naz, and he realizes that he is returning to the same place from where he fled. A neighbor who became an indirect witness to that tells the police that he saw a Muslim, but he cannot name the exact country of origin of the guy. Soon, Detective Dennis Box arrives at the scene and asks the patrolman about the man who is sitting in their car. 
Upon learning that this is just a drunk driver, the detective asks them to take him to the station and not interfere with the search for evidence. Upon entering Andrea's house, Dennis examines the rooms but does not find the weapon of the act realizing that the perpetrator took it with him. After leaving the girl's house, the detective notices one of the group of guys molesting Nas. The guy reports that he saw a Muslim next to her and is ready to help in catching the bad deeder. Meanwhile, Nas is taken to the police station. The guy is very afraid that they may find a knife in his possession or one of the witnesses will identify him. Naz is firmly convinced that he did not do it, but understands that he is a Muslim, whom no one will listen to. Seeing people at the police station, the guy tries to hide his face and moves from place to place, hoping that no one will identify him. Soon, he notices a witness, a detective and other police officers who were at the scene and begins to get even more nervous. The policewoman returns to the arrested driver and conducts a search before drawing up a fine. The detective communicates with the witness and the police, describing the approximate shape of the knife used to attack Andrea. At the same time, the policeman finds a knife in Naz's pocket, which shocks others. The police realize that they accidentally caught assassin who fled the scene and arrest him. The witness claims that the Muslim left in a taxi, and this only confirms the assumptions of the police and Detective Dennis. Naz is sent to a pre-trial detention cell, after which a detective visits him. Dennis tries to be as friendly as possible with the detainee and asks to talk about what happened at the girl's house. The student sincerely says that he does not remember what happened as they drank a lot of alcohol and enjoyed the time, after which he fell asleep. The detective notes that judges do not like a person who justify their act with amnesia, so it is better for him to write a sincere confession so that the case is resolved as soon as possible and he goes to prison, the place for a Muslim. Soon, the famous lawyer John Stone arrives at the prison, who notices the accused and learns about what he has done. Finding this case interesting, John decides to take up the case and try to prove the guy's innocence. Naz was denied a lawyer, and he resets calls from his parents, as he does not want them to know about what happened. After meeting with the lawyer, Naz tells the whole truth again, but John advises not to do this and keep his mouth shut, not saying anything superfluous. After that, the lawyer arranges with the police for a phone call so that Naz can talk to his parents and tell them about what happened. The father and mother arrive hastily at the police station and meet with the lawyer. John informs them that he is ready to defend their son and will even get bail. Later, Naz tells about it and shocks the parents, as they are convinced that their son is not capable of taking the life of an innocent girl. A little later, the lawyer again explains to the guy that he should not talk to anyone about what happened. No one is interested in the truth, and the police and Detective Dennis can use any word they say against him, trying to catch the bad deeder in a lie or confusion in testimony. John is sure that the truth will not do any good, moreover, indirectly confirms his guilt. The lawyer suggests inventing an alternative story that the judge could believe and acquit the Muslim student. The detective goes back to the scene to thoroughly inspect the girl's apartment and finds an inhaler for people with asthma. Later, Dennis returns to the temporary detention facility to talk to Nas. Previously, a detective could easily determine whether a real lawbreaker was sitting in front of him or not, but now he is too old and needs a thorough investigation. Dennis asks the student to tell him about what happened again, but Nas adheres to the lawyer's advice and refuses to say anything without John's participation. At night, Nas spends the first night in a shared cell and realizes that prison is a creepy place. The next morning, John prepares for court as he is in the final stages of the divorce process and hopes to pick up his son. A few days later, Naz finds himself in the courtroom where the judge announces a list of charges among which it is indicated that he took Andrea's against her will and then took her life. Naz does not justify himself and behaves too calmly, completely trusting the lawyer. John tries to convince the judge that he is not a lawbreaker and he is innocent, so he should be released on bail. The prosecutor strongly disagrees with the lawyer, believing that the guy poses a great threat to society, including because of his Pakistani origin. John notes that he is just a student and the son of hardworking parents, but this does not convince the judge. He believes that the charge is too serious and refuses to release Naz on bail. John tries to explain that all the evidence in the case is circumstantial, and the witnesses did not see the act itself but the judge remains unyielding in his decision and returns the student to the cell. This time, 
the guy is not sent to a detention center cell, but to a prison on Rikers Island where dangerous people are being held. In a new place for himself, Naz learns that there are privileged people among the prisoners, including a black man named Freddy. Not only does he have a lot of power in prison, but he also has a relationship with a female guard who buys him food, substances, and other things. Before Naz is in his cell, the guard asks the arriving prisoners about their religion, prayer time, and the type of food they prefer. Trying to stay away from other prisoners, Naz starts going to the prison mosque and prays with other Muslims. Freddy watches the guy with interest and a couple of days later invites him to his cell for a conversation. Meanwhile, John visits Naz's family and informs them that he is ready to continue to defend the guy and will appeal, but he needs to pay $80,000. Poor parents don't have that kind of money as they have only $8,000 in their account. The lawyer explains that no lawyer would want to help a guy for such a small amount and offers to borrow money from friends or relatives. John warns that in case of refusal, the court will appoint their son a lawyer, but it will do so right before the meeting. A free lawyer will not try to protect a stranger, so Naz will undoubtedly receive a large prison sentence. Deciding to make concessions, John leaves a note indicating that he is ready to continue working for $50,000. After the lawyer leaves, the parents discuss his proposal and think about taking out a loan secured by the house. A little later, the guy's father is visited by his friends, who are outraged by what is happening. They jointly owned the taxi that Naz took, so now they can't earn money. The next morning, the prosecutor came out to the press to tell reporters about a terrible act in the very center of the city. Upon learning that the perpetrator is a Muslim, journalists assume that he is an extremist or a follower of some terrorist organization. The prosecutor refuses to answer these questions, which creates discussion and interest in what happened. John also gives his comment and proves that Naz is innocent because a silent Muslim is not necessarily a person working for terrorists. The news story was watched by Alison Crow, the most famous lawyer in New York, who was interested in investigating the case. The woman finds out the address of the guy's family's house, after which she goes to her company and meets with a lawyer of Pakistani origin, a girl named Chandra, and asks to go with her. After meeting with Naz's parents, Allison offers the services of a lawyer completely free of charge, as she likes the interest in this case from journalists. The woman admits that she has always wanted to protect the oppressed and the needy, so money is not so important to her. The parents say that John asked for 50000 but Allison admits that defending a Pakistani man accused of taking another person's life costs five times more than this amount. Moreover, John is not an experienced lawyer as he has never defended people accused of such a serious case before. Meanwhile, John inspects the scene and notices Andrea's cat trying to break into the house. The parents thank Allison and Chandra for their kindness and then call their son to tell him the good news. Naz trusts John more, but learns that he is not an experienced lawyer, unable to save him from a long prison sentence. A little later, John visits a student and he refuses the services of a lawyer, which greatly upsets the man who was trying to achieve new heights in his career. Naz's father and his friends go back to the station to get their taxi back. The policeman declares that the car is evidence and the only way to return it is to accuse his own son of theft. At night, one of the guards comes to Naz to wake him up and take him to Freddy's cell. After meeting, the guy is very afraid, but the man calms him down since he invited the student for a conversation, not a beating. Freddy reports that most of the prisoners only pretend to be Muslims, unlike the Pakistani. The prisoner understands that Naz is a novice and he is not protected from attacks from other prisoners. Freddy offers his protection, but the guy refuses back in his cell. Naz tells his neighbor about the conversation and he warns that Freddy is a real man who can take the lives of five people in a matter of seconds. At night, Naz wakes up to go to the toilet. When he returns, he notices that his bed is on fire and realizes that his life may end this way. Meanwhile, John decides to continue the investigation, even though he is no longer Naz's lawyer. Believing that the guy is innocent, John goes to Andrea's funeral, where he meets her stepfather and tries to talk to him. A little later, he asks the friends of the deceased about what kind of girl she was, but Detective Dennis interferes with his work. Staying at the funeral until the very end, John notices that Andrea's stepfather is arguing with some relative. At the church, John notices a photo of a girl and draws attention to the sign behind her. 
Finding out every detail about Andrea's life, the lawyer learns that the girl attended a rehabilitation center for people taking not legal substances. The director of the center notices the lawyer and tries to drive him away. At the same time, one of the employees is ready to hand over Andrea's personal file in exchange for $350. John agrees and makes an appointment as he wants to know as many details about the deceased as possible. Thanks to this, John finds out that the girl was treated three times, but it still didn't help her. Allison is meeting with Nas to discuss the upcoming court hearing. John also arrives at the prison and, meeting Chandra, says that a famous lawyer is using her to gain the trust of the Pakistani family. John shows Chandra Andrea's personal file and is ready to give it to the girl to try to protect Naz and prove his innocence. At the court hearing, Allison uses his fame to put pressure on the judge and get the prisoner temporarily released from custody. She proves that he is a harmless university student with no criminal record, but the prosecutor insists otherwise and the judge takes his side. In the evening, Naz returns to the prison and meets a new prisoner who is ready to fight back against dangerous people. Having made friends with the prisoner, the guy confesses that he is innocent and is here by mistake, but the man is not interested in listening to this. In turn, a new friend tells Naz that he took the life of his niece's abuser and does not regret it at all. Allison goes to the prosecutor's office to get a reduced sentence. She is informed that no one is going to spare the Pakistani guy and he will receive a life sentence with the possibility of parole in 20 years. The only way to avoid this is to make a sincere confession and repentance right in the courtroom, after which his sentence will be reduced to 15 years. A little later, Allison goes to jail and tells Naz about the deal option. The guy doubts because he doesn't want to admit to something he didn't do. Trying to get another opinion, Naz meets with Chandra and consults on whether to make a confession or not. The girl advises to be honest, but warns of possible consequences. At the court hearing, Naz decides not to make a sincere confession, but simply tells the truth about how he spent the evening in Andrea's company. The judge does not change his decision, and Allison is angry because there is nothing else she can do to help the prisoner. Naz is ready to give up a lawyer because he wants to be honest with himself and will not admit to what he did not do. As a result, Allison refuses the defendant, handing over his case to his Pakistani assistant. In the evening, Naz is chatting with his new friend when suddenly he pours oil into a cup of hot water and sprays the contents in the guy's face. Naz manages to cover his face with his hand and gets burned, but hides the name of the prisoner who did this in the medical center. Realizing that prison is really dangerous, Naz goes to Freddy's cell and asks him for protection. Meanwhile, Chandra meets with John and offers to do business together to get justice. The examination finds not legal substances in Andrea and Nas, suggesting that the guy took funny pills even before meeting the girl. The prosecutor meets with the detective and asks her to give her all the information about where Nas was before that and immediately after it. After reviewing the surveillance cameras, Dennis collects information and passes it to the prosecutor. Seeing that the driver drove away two guys but allowed the girl to get into the car, the prosecutor assumes that he is a lawbreaker who deliberately waited for the victim. Meanwhile, John pretends to be a policeman and meets with a dealer of funny pills to talk about the late Andrea. It becomes known that she borrowed pills and powder, which put her life in constant danger. Chandra and John are upset by Naz's lies because he claimed that he did not take substances. Meanwhile, the prosecutor invites to his office a bully who tried to mock Naz shortly before he entered Andrea's house. Realizing that this guy's testimony is useless and he is too afraid, the prosecutor crosses him off the list of useful witnesses. A little later, the prosecutor meets with the medical examiner and asks about the wounds on the girl's body. The knife in Naz's pocket was indeed used to take her life, but there are no characteristic wounds on the guy's arm. The blows were strong, and he should have cut his hand on the blade, but his fingers and palms are completely intact. Meanwhile, the guard asks Naz to go to the bathroom where the prisoner who injured his arm is lying. Freddy decided to punish the abuser of his new friend and brutally beat him. Overjoyed by this, Naz also beats up the offender, turning from a harmless sheep into a cruel wolf capable of terrible things. Becoming a friend of Freddy, the Pakistani student begins to change and shaves his head, after which he decides to take up boxing. Freddy helps Naz settle into a separate cell, but soon asks for a favor. The guy has to swallow bags of white powder and take them to the prison for further sale to prisoners. A little later, 
he meets with John and Chandra, but does not listen to them as he notices a man who has to hand him a white powder. Acting brazenly, the guy gets a bag of powder and swallows it right in front of the lawyers, but does it so that they do not notice what is happening. John tries to understand why not legal substances were found in the guise, which he took before meeting Andrea, but he evades the answer, despite the reality of a life imprisonment. Upon returning to the cell, Naz takes the bags out of his stomach, but notices that one of them remains inside him. The guy is worried that the package will burst, as a result of which he may lose his life. John interrogates one of the bullies and learns that he was not alone, but with his friend. As it turned out, this man was a red thief and a lawbreaker who often attacked people with things. The lawyer manages to track down a potential threat, but he escapes. Meanwhile, Naz's parents have to take on any menial job to help their son and save money to pay for legal services. Chandra scans the security cameras from the gas station and notices a strange hearse driver who came up to the taxi to chat with Andrea. After seeing the license plate of the car and learning the name of the owner, the Pakistani lawyer goes to meet this man. The driver of the hearse reports that he tried to talk to Andrea as she seemed to him like a robber. Chandra treats the man's words with suspicion, suggesting that he is hiding something. Naz receives a mobile phone from Freddy to communicate with his family, as well as rent it out to other prisoners. The detective examines the guy's social pages and finds out that he was kicked out of high school. After meeting with the teacher, Dennis learns that Naz pushed the student down the stairs, showing unmotivated cruelty. Chandra finds out about this and decides to talk to the prisoner to understand the reason for his act. Naz justifies himself and says that he was bullied only because he is a Muslim, and it began after the events of September 11th. Chandra believes the guy's story because she was also bullied at school because of her religion and skin color. Back home, Chandra prepares for her first trial as a lawyer. Soon she is visited by Naz's father, who works as a courier to pay for her services. John tries to support Chandra, but she is nervous and does not want to talk to him. The next morning, Freddy gives Naz a shirt and tie so that he will be as stylish as possible at the trial. The prosecutor is firmly convinced that Naz is guilty, so during the court session she does everything so that the jury listens to her. She claims that the Pakistani is an obsessive man who deserves maximum punishment. The prosecutor shows videos and interrogates police officers, trying in every way to prove the prisoner's guilt. John wonders why Andrea lived in a very cool and expensive apartment. He decides to talk to Andrea's stepfather, but the man avoids meetings, hiding behind his lawyer. John soon learns from the financial advisor of the girl's late mother that her stepfather often met with older women for money. It also becomes known that Andrea refused to share the inheritance with her stepfather. Naz is walking down the corridor and notices how the prisoners are taking another against Will. A little later, the lawbreaker attacks him with a blade in the shower and threatens to take his life if he tells anyone about it. John goes to the gym where the late Andrea's stepfather works and sees him trying to have her on a bed another elderly woman. The prosecutor continues to arrange everything in such a way as to pass Naz off as a psychopath who deserves a life sentence. It also becomes known that the guy was selling funny pills at the university, which further discredits him. The doctor claims that the wound on Naz's arm is the result of a stabbing. Another expert disputes this conclusion, showing how the wound on the guy's arm was actually received. A little later, John notices in the photo the inhaler of a guy who was not found at the scene. He realizes that Detective Dennis took him away, and these actions seem suspicious to him. At the next meeting, the lawyers interrogate the detective, after which they realize that they can trust him, since Dennis also doubts Naz's guilt. John begins to follow the stepfather of the deceased and signs up for his gym. Tyler notices the lawyer and threatens him if he continues to be followed. In the evening, Naz returns to his cell and sees a guy who took his own life after other prisoners took him against Will. Naz tells Freddy about this, and he restores justice by taking the life of the one who bullied the young and helpless prisoner. The detective finally realizes that they want to sentence Naz to time solely because of his religion. Taking more recordings from video cameras, the detective learns that the girl had a fight with someone shortly before getting into a taxi. After conducting his own investigation, Dennis realizes that Andrea's mother's financial advisor was the girl's boyfriend and was at the scene. After talking to him, the detective realizes that it was this man who took Andrea's life. 
While the detective tells the prosecutor about everything, Chandra brushes lips Naz, but immediately regrets his action. During the meeting, Naz testifies, but makes mistakes, because he does not remember everything and doubts his own innocence. The detective leaves the courtroom, believing that he is guilty of failing to prove the innocence of the Pakistani guy. After the meeting, Freddy sees the prisoner and the lawyer brushing. He tries to disrupt the trial, but as a result, Chandra is fired, and John becomes Naz's only lawyer. The last session is crucial, so John is nervous and awake, preparing to speak to the jury. During the hearing, the lawyer admits that Naz stole his father's car and played dangerous games with Andrea. He took substances and fled the scene. Naz wanted to escape from the police, but John is sure of one thing for sure, Naz did not take the girl's life. The thing is that the blows were strong and accurate, and a person under the influence of pills is not capable of such a thing. The jury's opinion is divided equally, so the judge asks the prosecutor for an opinion. She realizes her mistake, as a result of which Naz is found innocent and released home. The prosecutor and the detective begin searching for the financial advisor who took Andrea's life. Naz returns home and constantly fights with his parents as he continued to live prison habits and take powder.